Okay, this is a question about kangaroo locomotion, and the kangaroo is bounding across a flat stretch of ground, and each jump carries its 10 meters. We're told that the kangaroo takes off at a 20 degree angle. So basically, the bounding motion looks like this. The kangaroo leaves the ground at a certain speed, at a 20 degree angle, flies through the air, and completes its motion at the same height because it's a flat stretch of ground. And over this trajectory, it flies a distance of 10 meters through the air. This is a projectile motion problem. While the kangaroo is moving from here to here, it's not in contact with the ground. The only force that's acting is gravity. And so therefore, the kangaroo is in free fall and it's moving horizontally. This is a projectile motion problem. And so we can use the mechanism of all our projectile motion problem solving in order to figure out the details of the kangaroo's motion. And let's prepare to solve this problem now that we know this. Okay, now we're told that the kangaroo leaves the ground at a 20 degree angle. We aren't told how fast it leaves the ground at. In fact, that's what we're trying to find, the takeoff speed. We're also looking for the horizontal speed, which is the horizontal component of the kangaroo's motion. Well, if the take, kangaroo is taking off at a speed v, and we're just going to call it v because we don't know what that number is, the horizontal component is just v times the cosine of 20 degrees. Now, I want to notice something about this. The cosine of 20 degrees is 0 0.94. That's very, very close to 1. And so I expect the horizontal speed to be very, very close to the takeoff speed. Okay? So in the end, when we have to calculate these two numbers, we expect these two to be quite, quite close to each other. The vertical speed is going to be less. Okay, the vertical speed, the Vy, is equal to V times the sine of 20 degrees. That'll be a much smaller speed. So the kangaroo is leaving the ground, it's moving horizontally, and it's moving vertically. And remember, we know different things about the horizontal motion and the vertical motion. Okay, so for the vertical motion, it's free fall. The kangaroo starts leaving the ground, moving upward at a speed of v times the sine of 20 degrees. It finishes moving downward at negative v times the sine of 20 degrees. That's the vertical motion, and it's just free fall between this point and this point. So from here to here, the acceleration is equal to negative g. This is a free fall problem. The horizontal motion okay, it's just uniform motion. The kangaroo moves from here to here, and in between the two, it's moving at a constant speed of v times the cosine of 20 degrees from here to here. So I have a free fall problem coupled with the uniform motion problem, and the thing that links the two is the time interval, okay, as we've seen in previous problems. And with this in mind, we have everything we need to solve the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up and solve. And if we do that, here's what we're going to do. First off, let's get the time interval from the vertical motion because we know the speed at which the kangaroo leaves the ground. We know how fast it lands, how fast it's moving when it lands, and we know the acceleration. Remember, my basic definition for the acceleration is this. Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time interval. Okay, in this case, we're looking for the time interval. The time interval is just going to be equal to the change in velocity divided by the acceleration. Well, in this case, the change in velocity is just negative 2 times v times the sine of 20 degrees because it starts at positive v times the sine of 20, ends at negative v times the sine of 20. The acceleration is directed downward. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. It's just negative g. And so I have the time interval. Okay, it's just 2 times v times the sine of 20 degrees divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, we don't know v. We don't know the takeoff speed. We're looking for that. So we're just going to leave this relationship as is for now. But now let's turn our attention to the horizontal motion. The horizontal motion is just uniform motion at a speed vx as written right here. So the distance that the kangaroo is going to travel in the air is just vx times delta t. Well, we know what vx is. It's v times the cosine of 20 degrees. And we know what the time interval is. That's 2 times v times the sine of 20 degrees divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. 
Now I'll mention something else. We also know what delta x is equal to because the kangaroo moves a distance of 10 meters from its takeoff point. That's its change in horizontal position. That's its delta x. So this is just 10 meters. Now look at this relationship, okay? In this relationship, we have known trig functions, known number, number. The only thing we don't know is v. And so we can set this problem up and just solve for the speed. And if we do that, we get a speed of 12.3 meters per second. That's what we're asked for. We're asked for the takeoff speed. The horizontal speed, vx, is just equal to v times the cosine of 20 degrees. That will be 11.6 meters per second. But this is a two significant figure problem, and so we need to report our results to two significant figures. So the takeoff speed, we're going to report as 12 meters per second. The horizontal speed, we're going to report as 12 meters per second. In fact, these two numbers are the same as we report them because they're very, very close to each other. And they're very, very close to each other because the cosine of 20 degrees is a number that's very near to 1. And so the horizontal speed and the actual takeoff speed are very close to each other. Now let's do a quick assessment. As you know, all the numbers that we use in our problems are realistic. 12 meters per second is about 25 miles per hour. So if, if a kangaroo is bounding along and it leaves the ground at a 20 degree angle and it's moving at 25 miles per hour, it's going to go a pretty big distance, in this case about 30 feet. And that makes sense. It's going to go in these kind of like long bounding arcs. And this matches my recollection of movies that I've seen of kangaroos moving in a very, very good clip. So in fact, our final result matches our expectation of how the world works.